Welcome back everyone. I wanted to jump into talking about experimenting and exploring as the first part of the art collection on my YouTube channel. I really love this topic and if you know me or you've taken any of my classes or my workshops in person or online, you know that I talk all, a lot about um, exploring, experimenting, and trying to find something in art and creativity that sparks your interest. It's not really about making money off of it or a career off of it, but just something to make you love life through creativity. And so this topic, experimenting versus exploring, we're going to find out what kinds of things can really help us to love creativity again and whether or not we can find that. So there's three different things in regards to experimenting versus exploring. The first is these both of these things lead to trying new things. And that's really the only way we're ever going to know if something is for us or not so much, or if it's just for fun. And in experimenting, we're literally trying things. For example, when I was instructing art workshops, I first experimented with plaster of Paris. I never used that before. And even though I have all the experience, 10 plus years of experience with art, I never really worked with plaster of Paris ever. And so I thought, let's just try and let's see. I don't even know what it is. I, I opened up the box and I saw the white clumps inside and I thought, well, then it's like clay or it's like clay. I don't know. <laughs> you take it out and I realized, man, it dries so fast. There's probably a lot of different things you could do, uh, a lot of different mediums that you can mix it with in order to create certain kinds of effects. Did I know any of that? No, I didn't. I just used Plaster of Paris and three different mediums um, just to see what kinds of effects I could get from Plaster of Paris. How much do I need to use versus how much water? Um, how fast do I have to apply it? Can I use layers? All these kinds of things. This was all part of trying something new. But it was an experiment, you know, not just an experiment to see if I like it, but an experiment to see if I could even do it. <laughs> and the first time I did it, I don't think it was very good. It was, I was trying to make a globe and it was like cracking in places. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I made it like abstract as I usually do and just pretended like, you know, the world is falling apart and made it up like some sort of, um, I don't know, metaphor with that. But it was so, so difficult to do. And so I thought, you know, I need to try again or I need to try to use this in a way that I would like to do it because I think when I was trying to make sculptures out of plaster parrots, I hated it. Um, naturally, I don't like pottery in general, so anything that's related to sculpting something, usually using forms of plaster or clay or even just like water and flour, is not my thing. But I learned to find something that related to myself and so that's part of the next part which is to see what works. When I started with Plaster of Paris and even with clay, I, like I said, I made the globe and then I made a landscape which looked really really cool. It looked like a tropical landscape. I'll, I'll probably show you a little piece here. And I really loved how the colors blended together. I liked the 3D effect. The unfortunate part is because I used it on a canvas, the water soaked in the canvas and it, it started warping. But you know, that, that stuff happens, it is what it is. And I combined this with clay in order to change the um, effects of the surface to reduce the cracking and all these kinds of things. But I realized I wasn't, thoroughly enjoying this and that's part of seeing what works do you actually enjoy it or are you just doing an experiment like in chemistry for example and we all know that art is chemistry just looking beautiful and i was trying to see not only what works but what do i enjoy and when i was working with the clay i was trying to build a sculpture maybe the size of like a brat doll or a barbie doll you know uh, but it wasn't really working. I, I, I don't want to say I hated it, but whatever is close to that without being so harsh, I did not like the process. And so 
I sat down playing with it. I remember I took apart my sculpture and I just started playing with it, making these little bowls, little, little bowls like this big. Um, and I'll just show you again some pictures here, some videos. And I started making little chairs, a little door, and then I realized, ah, it's not that I don't like clay. And it's not that I don't like pottery. It's that I've never found anything to create that I enjoy creating and that I enjoy the process of using clay or using plaster of Paris or whatever. So it is very important to actually see what works for you and see what you enjoy. And it will not be the same thing as like your best friend in the world. Your best friend in the world might like something completely opposite than you. Your best friend in the world might like to create stuff using clay that have nothing to do with what you like to create. But it is what it is. Everyone is different. Let everyone bask in their differences. It's okay. That's just part of exploration. The third aspect of experimenting versus exploration is what I believe is the most important. And it's re-sparking our inner child. Now, the experimenting part, this is probably where the biggest difference is. Experimenting is solely about combining new products, new mediums together to create something new. And it may or may not turn out like what you envision in your head. Sometimes it ends up a little bit better, which is always nice. But exploration is where you consistently experiment in order to either arrive at the vision or beyond the vision. And the process of exploration can be very frustrating, um, especially when you're trying to create something for a deadline or for a project. But the importance is that along the way of exploring and experimenting, that you're actually jumping into doing things that attract you, that appeal to you. You don't go into things like oils, for example, when you know that you've experimented with oils, maybe it didn't turn out how you wanted, or maybe you just really hated the process of oils, even if you were creating things you like. Okay, so oils are aside, we're not jumping into that. Maybe you tried wire art and it was just too much dexterity and it was hurting your hands. You know, it's not that you didn't like the wire art, you like to do it, but you know, maybe your hands are just not up to code for for literally rewiring art. Um, and maybe you've even tried movement in art and trying to combine the two together, but maybe you're in a way like me where you have a certain condition that in a way doesn't exactly limit you, but you do have the limit where you can't be moving too, too much. And so you feel like, okay, I want to do something that doesn't require a lot of movement, you know, maybe is not so technical, especially with my hands, and does not involve the similar long process of oils or the need for masks, so on and so forth. Even though it might be frustrating when you find out, oh, you don't like this, you don't like that, this isn't working, this isn't working for you, all these doors that you're closing, you're, you're actually getting closer to the door that's waiting for you, if that makes sense. Um, you're not wasting your time kind of being like, oh, I have to work with oils because the best people work with oils and I want to prove that I can be the best. Like, no, there's, there's people who can be very great, incredibly great at what they do through mediums that maybe even haven't even been used yet. You have to be confident enough to shut the doors that don't work for you. You have to be confident enough to know what you vision and vision and to go for this vision instead of, well, I'm going to do this because that's what everyone else is doing, or I'm going to do this because everyone will recognize me for it and I'll have the spotlight, you know, things for the pride and the ego, just put it aside. Because the closer you become to finding the thing that you envision or going beyond, the closer, the, the more likely you are to re-spark your inner child. You're actually more likely to enjoy what you're doing. And so you don't feel like, oh, this is, this is so much work. It is a lot of work, 
we, we it's, it's always going to be a lot of work um if, if you're a creator you know that even if you're doing something you love that saying when they're like if you if you do what you love you won't work a day in your life that's not true at all <laughs> what's true is it takes a lot of hard work to achieve the things that you thoroughly enjoy but the result or the process to the result is totally totally worth it and so it's just about getting up and getting going so that you can get into your zone and 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 really enjoy the process of what you're doing and these are the three things that i feel really involve experimenting and exploring these two things should not be separate you should always be experimenting always be exploring even if something you like is like um liquid pour if if you're a, a pouring artist and you've been doing the same stuff with the same colors over and over you can try new colors you can try new media to mix in with the pouring of your paints um and so you found the thing that you like pouring and if you're a pouring artist maybe you found the thing you like you know you love to you love the pouring of art you like the mixing and how it kind of goes together and what the colors might create but maybe you try new media maybe you try to add new things new textures, uh, maybe you try to base it off of new stories. And all these things help you to re-spark that, that creative interest. And that's what experimenting and exploring are meant to do. They're meant to have you in this beautiful space of frustration and chaos and irritation just to end up with this feeling of joy and exhilaration that comes with creating your own piece. So, so that's all I have to say on exploring and experimenting, guys. I have so much more to say in the next few videos. Please like and subscribe. I am going into doing this YouTube channel and I'm very excited for what's to come. If you'd like, you can also visit my Patreon and choose to become a Patreon or you can go ahead and watch some exclusive content there as well that is not uploaded to YouTube. Thank you very much, guys. You know who it is. Adios. Okay. Say what you need to say, look at the camera, say what you need to say. She doesn't have much to say. Where's the hockey? <laughs>